um, like the other times, you, you pick some scriptures and we're going to go through them. And uh, I'll go ahead and read them. And so we're going to start in Mark chapter 7, verses 3 through 9. Uh, I'm missing 3. I wonder how that happened. Maybe I labeled it wrong. I'm sorry. I'm not sure what I did there. thought I proofread this. But anyway, the concept is the encroachment of Talmudic philosophy. The encroachment of Talmudic philosophy. So it says, when they come from the marketplace as the town square... They do not eat unless they wash by being fully wet in a ceremony ablution uh, to be sacred. And there are many other things which they have received, learned from an assumed office, I thought that was interesting in the Greek, mm -hmm. and hold with seizing strength like the washing of cups, pitchers, copper vessels, and couches. Uh, I think verse 3 says uh, they question Yeshua about why do his disciples, ah, yes, yes. you know, right. uh, transgress the tradition of the, of the elders. elders. Not right. Yahweh's commandments, mm -mm. but a tradition. Mm -hmm. And many of us uh, assume righteous, based, righteous or unrighteous based on our transgression. Today, I, I guess Yahweh is leading you to, so we are talking about those in the Hebraic roof movements, you know, uh, uh, where are you getting your traditions mm -hmm, from? Mm -hmm. Where are you getting your customs from? Uh, because all of these customs were designed to take away your righteousness in, in Yeshua, to give you some sort of self-righteousness. And all of us have been guilty of it. Uh, as I said in the opening statement, we coming through a journey that we're talking about things we experience. These are things that I myself were once uh, using and doing. Uh, we have the washing of hands before we eat. You know, uh, in, in the uh, culture today, uh, if the health department came and inspected your, your business establishment, they want to know that your hot water comes on within so many seconds mm -hmm. and that you know how many seconds you have to wash your hands vigorously, wash them all the way up to your wrists and everything and take the paper. These are ways that they consider you undefiled and not contaminated. But what's on the inside? You see what I'm saying? We got our priorities we, in reverse. We, right? They can't see mm -hmm. how corrupt that you is. And, and, and for the life of me, uh, this thing they got going on now, uh, uh, this virus thing, you can't tell they got the virus. No, no you can't. Huh? Mm -mm. It only exposed when it comes out and produces itself like sin. It only shows up when it comes from the inside out. But if you're just looking at a person based on appearance, how would you know they're a sinner? You have to have spiritual insight and, dis and discernment. And so this yeah. tradition that they had back then really justified them as being righteous ones or ones, as the scripture there it, uh, translates it, that's learned. He knows the way to tell me. He knows how to tell me how I should present myself or what, what manner of person I should be. Just forget about Moses and the Torah. Mm -hmm. I'm in the, in the position now. I'm in Moses' seat. So this is what I'm teaching you. Didn't say Moses in, in verse 3. It said the tradition of the elders. Right. Not Moses' traditions. Right. So today, what traditions are you receiving? Because right. man don't change, you know, through history. We all fall into the same traps and we don't question. You know, it's about awareness. You know, it's about coming to an awareness. It's not about we're here to try to condemn anybody. Exactly. This is about coming to an awareness. That's what it's all about. Exactly. Now, what you do with that information is totally up to you. But you will suffer the consequences, you know, if you don't do anything with it. Eventually, you will have to pay the piper for it. So in verse 5, it says, Then the Pharisees, a religious separatist secretary, and scribes ask him, why do your disciples not walk as a companion, as proof of their ability to live according, just like you said, according not to Torah, but to the tradition of Jewish Talmudic law? Mm -hmm. 
Because that's where the tradition of the elders come from. So they're taking up issue with them directly right there. They're taking up issue with them right there. And, you know, I'm just going to break for just a second here. It just dawned on me, this thing like you brought up about the virus. Mm -hmm. if, you don't, if you don't subscribe to the so-called experts who are telling you this is the way things have to be done, you're an outsider. You don't fit in the mold on the inside and where everybody else is conforming to what we're saying. And I'll, most people are conforming out of intimidation. They don't necessarily really believe it, but out of intimidation, they're conforming. It's the same thing. It's like I said in the last video. They are trying to take away your sovereignty. Recognize what is happening. I'm not saying don't wear the mask. I'm not saying don't uh, wash your hands. I'm not saying that. I'm talking about the bigger motive behind this whole thing is what you got to really be careful about and, 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 and pay attention to. That's what I'm trying to get to. So these guys are doing the same thing here. They're not promoting Moses. They're the authority. And they're saying, why are you not doing according to Talmudic law? So it goes on to say of the elders who are older senior Sanhedrims, but eat bread that is unleavened, show bread, which is unleavened bread, mm -hmm. with unwashed, shared, defiled, unclean, and unholy hands. Mm -hmm. So in other words, when you put your grubby hands into the bowl, mm -hmm. you've now contaminated, even if they're not grubby, because you didn't wash it three times like they said, mm -hmm. you've now defiled all the rest of the bread in there. When everybody else takes it, now they're defiled, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is a lot of nonsense. Mm -hmm. I mean, they go, they go so much more deeper than that. We're just trying to cover the basics on this. So in verse 6, he answered and said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, who are a stage-playing character, as it is written, as a valuable prize of me with their lips. I mean, this people honors as a valuable prize of me with their lips, as a pouring out of water, in other words, they're, they're very zealous about it. Oh, Elohim, oh, Elohim, you know, oh, Adonai, Adonai. You know, they're very passionate about what they're doing, okay? And it's pouring out like water, you know? It looks real good. But their heart, where the thoughts and feelings reside, is far from me. Far from me. Verse 7. And in vain, through a manipulated search, to no end purpose, they worship me. <laughs> I can't think of anything more degrading. And I tell other believers this. What you're doing is, and I had this discussion with somebody yesterday, actually. Where you're going is going to lead you to nowhere any good. Mm -hmm. Okay? And you're going to have to recognize that you have no way out except for one way. And I pointed out what that was. Mm-hmm. The worst thing that could happen to a person is you go through your whole life pursuing something. It doesn't matter what it is. Mm -hmm. And when you get to the end of it, you, thought, you found out it was all a fraud. Mm -hmm. And now you're too old to turn it around and do anything about it. Mm -hmm. And you go to your grave knowing you were totally defeated because your whole premise for what you were chasing after was flawed and you got robbed of everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When, when he gave me these, these, these um, verses here, he posed the question, and I would like to ask the same question. Who is it that you are worshiping? Mm -hmm. Yahweh or yourself? Uh, Yeshua had an encounter uh, with a Samaritan woman at the well. And they went back and forth with some words. And to just to end the conversation he had with her, he told her, you worship, you know not what. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, he say, we know who we worship. Mm -hmm. Salvation is of the Jews. Mm -hmm. He says, so those who worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. Do you have both of them together? Because there's no spirit within traditions of Yahweh. It's a dead seed. It's, 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 it's the spirit of man that you're seeking to get man's approval. But whose approval should we really be um, inspiring mm -hmm. to get 
I don't know if you're with me on this. Oh, I'm with you. And, and, and we, I've been on that journey because I want to be accepted. But my accepting is not based on, is Yahweh pleased with me? You with me? Mm-hmm. It's, it's based on, is he pleased with me? Am I, do I have my uh, attire on correctly? Am I saying the right words that he want to hear? I sat in a congregation, and I'm telling you, I hear them every Sabbath. I'm so glad we're not like them sinners. <laughs> we keep the Sabbath. I, I hear this. You with me? We're all sinners. Yeah. And we dress different. Uh-huh. We don't do what they do. But in our hearts, the minute you give the opportunity, you find all the things they were doing that they say they was glad they were not doing. Yep. So all of the speaking they were doing was in vain because they were only speaking that way because the man wanted them to speak that way. You know, way. I, I, I think that they're, part of that problem is that when people come into the faith, and whether it's this faith or other faith, I think it's a, a, a generally a, a phenomenon that exists, and that is when you come into a faith and you don't know much about it, but you're somehow convicted of it, you hinge on everything the leader's telling you. Mm -hmm. And you want to please that leader. And that is the problem right there, because just as you stated. Mm -hmm. If your focus is on pleasing that leader, and I'm not saying you should go against them, I'm just simply saying if your focus is to please the leader and not scrutinize everything that person is telling you, you're in a lot of trouble. Oh, yeah. And that's where it leads you down this road like you're just talking about. So the very first thing you could do is protect your sovereignty. Scrutinize everything that people are saying, including what we're saying. Mm-hmm. Scrutinize everything. I don't want you to believe what I'm telling you. Go look this up for yourself. Yes. And then test it out and see which one has the weight. Yes. Yes. And if you're not willing to do that, you're done. You're gone. Mm-hmm. You're, there's no hope for you. Mm-hmm. unless Yahweh has some mercy on your rear end and he decides to look down on you and do something for you. Mm-hmm. Other than that, I don't have any pity for people like that. And when mm-hmm. you look in the book of Revelation, that's what it comes down to. Mm-hmm. You have the sheep and you have the goat. Mm-hmm. And the ones that are rebellious and will not acknowledge Yahshua HaMashiach as the Messiah who's coming back, mm-hmm. they're going to have a heavy price to pay. Yahweh going to have no mercy on them. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. they're going to seek death and they're not going to find it. Mm-hmm. So let's move on. They worship me, teaching for instruction, learning of the commandments of men. There we go. Mm-hmm. For laying aside through omission of not mentioning the commandment as an, or the Torah mm-hmm. as an authoritative prescription of Yahweh. Not from men, mm-hmm. but of Yahweh. Mm-hmm. You hold with seizing strength. They mm-hmm. won't give it up. Mm-hmm. And it's the same today. They won't give it up. Mm-hmm. Want to hold on to your tradition. And replace that with the word of Yahweh. The tradition of Jewish Talmudic law of men, the washing of pitchers and cups and many other such things you do. Mm -hmm. He said in a systematic discourse to them, all too well you reject by de-esteeming, neutralizing, and despising the commandment as an authoritative prescription of Yahweh that you may keep from loss or injury your tradition. Mm -hmm. Mm. That it's it's almost self-explanatory it for is. a person to say, "Let me examine: Am I walking in this? Who am I? Who am I really worshiping? Who am I believing?" You know, um, it's so many times uh, we walk. Uh, I think you brought it up earlier about the uh, tash lit and. Um, what they call Rosh Hashanah. Now, they'll say that this is the Jewish New Year. <laughs> you know, well, if you got your own New Year, you're going to celebrate it. But don't mix it in. You with me? I'm trying to stay on subject with well, the, no, with you're the right, seed, corrupting the seed. The Jewish idea that, that Rosh Hashanah is the New Year is not neither in Scripture it was borrowed from the Babylonian priest because that was their new year. It, exactly. And the scripture tells you it's the seventh month. So do your year begins in the seventh month? <laughs> uh, 
let everybody know. I haven't figured that one out. You know, I mean, I have. And and, and, and then you go on yeah. down further in your new year, and now you really want to be in the seventh month because you get into the rest of the feces now. Right. Everybody's forgotten about we in a new year, so why you keep talking about the seventh month? Uh -huh. Do our month start with seven? Or is seven, like you saying, is a completion of something? Yeah, it's confusion. You, you with me? Yeah. And so we're, we're, we're just talking about things that might seem minor to everybody else. It's like they like the, uh, the Christmas thing they like to celebrate, mm -hmm. you know, and the Halloween stuff they like to do. And oh, Easter, it's just yeah. fun. Right. You, are you just doing this for fun? Or are you doing it for life? You know, uh, Yahweh gave us a way to live. And whatever is not of faith is sin. Sin. And he gave yeah. us a way to live. Right. Why we're not content? Why we're not happy? Why we're not pleased with what he gave us? Why do we need to add more? And I mean, these people will tell you, oh, he said, don't add or take away. Because whatever you add, the player's is going to be added. You, you, you know, and, and yet they'll turn around and they will add something. Why are we sitting there as though we're not hearing? You know, Isaiah talked about all this. They became dull, dull of hearing unless they hear and they see and their hearts be healed and they repent. You know, the scripture, uh, I had told you this before, and it shocked me when I first got the word from Yahweh. This is about four years ago now, I think. And I was reading uh, where it says, and there'll be a famine of the hearing of the word. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Yahweh said, that's not what I meant by what I said. And I'm like, come again? Mm -hmm. And he said, there'll be a famine of the hearing. Mm-hmm. If there was going to be a famine of the word, I just would have said there was a famine of the word. But there's a famine of the hearing. Mm -hmm. We're putting out these scriptures like on a silver platter. We're baby spoon feeding you. Mm -hmm. And if you can't, still can't get this, you don't have the Shema. The Shema is hero Israel, hear with intelligence. It's not just to hear it. Hear it with intelligence so that you can perceive in your mind what this means. And how does it apply to me? So we need to be doing the Shema. When these things are being shown like this, you need to ask for intelligence, for discernment, for understanding, for wisdom. Baruch Hashem. I know when you came up with the title, I, I, I pretty much receive all of this because I'm sitting there and I'm, I, I re-examine myself through every mm -hmm. process daily. That's me. You know, I, I don't seek to justify myself. I, I let the word examine me, mm -hmm. you know, and then it's up to me whether I want to repent. And that's just, this just talking about my experience. And what I found is that in this passage right here, and we're going to see more of it, oh, but I just yeah. want to bring it out right here. Oh, yeah, the big guns are coming Not out. Not one time did they say, uh, why are they acknowledging the traditions of Yahweh mm -hmm. uh, does say Yahweh. Right, right. But every word that came through a prophet, even through Yeshua, you know, it was does say Yahweh, not me. Why you are not listening to what I'm telling you? Mm -hmm. He's letting you know, they, they call him seer sometimes, right. but he's showing you that he's looking at you and he's letting somebody who you don't have a clue about see what he's seeing and yet you still look as though it's that person that's saying they don't know what they're talking about because they don't know me well you know for yourself i know what you're doing that's what yeshua is telling you you know <laughs> i know what you're doing i just came here you don't even give me no kind of respect right. who is he what good can come out of nazareth right if you already be be belittled me you already called me a devil hmm? how can i see all of this stuff except my father right. who sent me, show, right. Right. show me. I'm just giving you what he's saying. And that's all we're doing. We're just giving you what he's saying. And I tell him this in the prison, in the jail all the time. Don't, don't take my word as you said. Mm -hmm. Trace it and see do it come from heaven. Because if it didn't come from heaven, then disregard it. Because there ain't nothing I can say to help you. Right. These words are not mine. But the father that sent me, that what was Yeshua was telling them and what they did. Oh, they went to discredit him even more. 
and the mass majority of the people took sides with the men because those men can hurt me, but Yahweh can't hurt me. I don't know if you're with me. Oh, I'm with you. I, I, I just want to just sum all of this last three verses that we read up into that. Who, who is it that you're worshiping? Question yourself. What is it that you're doing to get your righteousness from? Right. These customs and these traditions, they're not your righteousness. They're not your identity. All your identity is in Yeshua. Right. I mean. Stand up for him. Mm -hmm. Protect his honor. Honor his name. He laid his life down for us. Honor him. And if you won't do it, you're not respecting him either. Exactly. And I didn't realize that Yahshua was the first one that didn't get true respect. I thought it was Rodney Dangerfield. I don't get no respect. <laughs> no respect. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, but no, uh, the, the, that's the truth of the matter is, is that if we are doing the same, then we're no different than these guys here, the mm -hmm. Talmuds, you know, the, the Sanhedrins and the, the rabbis and the whole group of them, you know.